Welcome to the Salty Investors episode number 21. And how are you this week, Tim? Yeah, pretty good yourself. Oh, you know. <laughs> Not no, bad, eh? Don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hello. The long pause. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Say. Actually, th- things, aren't, things aren't too bad this week. I think I'm, uh, yeah, it's, I'm probably slightly above average, you know. Oh, yeah. Good. Fair yeah, to yeah. middling. <laughs> yeah. Um, Let's get to the salt, shall we? Uh, yeah, what's yeah. The salt what's well, this week, Tim? You go, or you want me to go? Oh, or... you want me to go first? Oh, yeah, yeah I'll go yeah. first. Oh. Um, Jim Chalmers, uh, as you know, the Labor government, um, as most left of centre governments want to do, they just can't help themselves interfering with more and more of um, people's uh, private property and all kinds of things. And so they're having a review of superannuation. Now, there's a whole argument about tax concessions going to the rich. Fair enough. That's not really what I'm interested in. I was interested in this line that um, Chalmers was giving a speech and he was going to um, stress the need for super funds to keep up with changing investment priorities such as climate the care economy and technology. Now, I just do not like politicians telling private investment companies where they should be putting their investments. And and I'm not suggesting that he's going to mandate anything. I just don't like the suggestion that the government is trying to pick sectors, the winners and losers. They're already doing that with our money, taxpayers' money, (laughs) leave our superannuation out of it. Full stop. Yep. Yeah, well, the same old, same old, isn't it? I don't know what the care economy is. What's that? That's like oh, maybe the healthcare sector. Yeah, maybe. Uh, yeah, the need. I'm sure because you know they they hate privatization. They don't like the fact that healthcare companies run you know aged care facilities and uh, whatnot okay. and pay people what they consider terrible wages and all this sort of stuff. They they have it in for them. Okay. It is one of those bugbears. Um, you would have said we have a real. I think we have a real sort of heavy-handed government tailwind behind us at the moment. That's what it feels like to me. I don't know if you saw um, the New South Wales government is thinking about privatising water. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, there's, there's a story. I don't know if that's. You know, the Liberal Party and, oh, it's a big scandal. Uh, you know, so, oh, God, no. Yeah, you know, like, yeah, because government government runs things so well. But, you know, I guess there's an argument about water different to, say, doing bridges or something. So, but anyway, yeah, there seems to be a real, at the moment, there's a, ta- there's a strong community idea or mm-hmm. in this country there seems to be strong support uh for the government getting its hands on all kinds of things that it probably shouldn't but we need to learn that lesson all uh, over and over and over again yeah, um, everyone everyone used to complain about anyway Tel- telstra and or telecom how bad the prices were and the service was terrible uh, they're just yeah. like oh we privatize it and yeah we don't hear about that anymore you can just change providers mm. If you don't like well, it. Well, but but then what we did was we created another massive yeah. government boondoggle in the MBN, didn't we? <laughs> uh, which, you know, was ridiculously high costs and inefficiencies, and we know all about that. Um, so, yeah. yeah, thanks for that. Yeah, I mean, who who would say was, this, was the Commonwealth Bank's privatisation a failure? Oh. I, would, I don't think Commonwealth Bank shareholders would think so. I see it on Twitter. People say, we used to own that. So it's like, yeah, because yeah, they're talking about the profits now. So what about the bad years? Did you want to own that as mm. well? I'm like, oh, no, yeah. no, no. <laughs> well, see, Sal- Sally McManus is running around saying that um, uh, the reason prices are so high is because of gouging, basically, by mm. companies. It's not really anything to do with inflation or that most of it's yeah. you know, companies at behaving badly. And the Australia Institute, which is, you know, staffed by former greenies, um, is running around saying the same thing. Um, I don't know how they determine what portion is, yeah, you know, comes from where, but yeah. Anyway, that's yeah. That, that's probably enough of that tangent. Yeah. Uh, oh, do you have anything else to say on that? Oh, just you know, Coles and Woolies are now on the firing line. They've been added to the list, so oh, right. they're yeah. making too much money as well. Not just the banks. So yeah, I don't know. Just. Oh, well, another back. thing people need to consider is if, if say, Woolies profits are up 10%, remember that they don't report those 
adjusted for inflation. You know, so they're really just keeping up with inflation there. If it, I don't know what will these pro, uh, profits were up. They they were out yesterday with results, but I didn't see it anyway. Mm. But I mean, yeah. Anyway, uh, what's your soul for this week, Tim? Oh, just the normal rant. But you know, there's long duration assets, people who invested in real estate stocks and everything, and now the the real you know the interest rates are going up a little bit more. And people are just losing their mind. It just feels like they're entitled. They feel like they're entitled to get a return here with a backstop. Yeah. You know, they just feel like they're not aff- offering real value to people. It's only when they've got this backstop with low interest rates that they can offer b- real value to people. Yeah. It just seems a bit hypocritical and a bit entitled to me that this is continuing. And it just seems to be getting worse and worse. <laughs> I read about it. Um, yeah, and I just went and had a quick look at historical returns before we had all the central banking and everything, you know, what'd be, a, mm. and it was above 10%. That's the, you know, cost of capital was yeah. well over 10%. You know, we haven't even hit a five number here and they, you know, people are losing their minds. So yeah. mm. I just think people's expectations need to be reset here a little bit. Mm. Nothing new. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, it's there, you know, look, the good times were good. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they, they've, you know, all, what happened to the last 10 years when interest rates really, that was good times. Yeah. But that, I mean, I think people have to reframe that and say, that was the aberration. Yes. And of course you pay for that on the downside. And I still mm-hmm. don't think we haven't fully paid for that yet, but what we will, yep. um, I mean, high, high returns are just future returns pulled forward and you have to pay it back sooner or later. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Right. All right. Well, let's get off the salt. Um, I thought this was an interesting one. I, I sent this to you earlier in the week, I think. Um, mm. You know, Jim Bianco, who I, I really like. He's he's a very in, informative commentator. He's been around for a while. Um, yeah, so he's basically said, look, um, today's Fed's funds rate, is they're pricing in over 5%. Now, we've been saying on this <laughs> podcast since day one, <laughs> the market keeps under mm-hmm. – uh, they, the they're just not mm. – yeah, they're just not believing the Fed. They've, they've continually tried to price in the pivot, the pivot, the pivot, the pivot, and it's finally almost like they've given up. And I included the co- that first comment there, not because I want to um, have a go at that guy, but I just think that his comment's sort of representative of where the market has been. Why do you think the market is overshot? And Bianco says maybe it hasn't. Now, that's the point. It hasn't overshot. It's actually just caught up with reality, yeah. which is the way I sort of see it. I thought that was, yeah, interesting that uh, maybe they're like, yeah, you know what? The Fed is going to just keep going <laughs> until, you know, th- and they're going to keep going up until the inflation rate meets it. And they're not, and they're getting, they may pause, but they're not going to reverse until they see the inflation rate keep going down because they know the experience of the 1970s when they, when was it Arthur Burns yep. twice, three times? They stopped, reversed, inflation took off again. They know that experience. They well, Volcker fell for happen. it too. Volcker Volca <laughs> fell for it once, yeah. Yes, so yeah. he's not, you know, everyone talks about him being the wonder child, but no, no, yeah. even he, you know, the hard nosed yeah. guy saved it, but no. So, yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. All righty. Um, yeah, so typically when, the forward uh, estimates are, you know, rolling over. The Fed's cutting, not so in this case. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the Fed's raising into EPS uh, uh, cuts, yeah. which is not normally. Um, you can see there what if you if you go back to two thousand and eight, nine. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can see Fed funds is. I mean, EPS was coming down. <clears throat> I guess it was already coming down. Um, yep. forward EPS. Um, remember that's a that's a growth rate. It's not a it's not a um, like the, the the it's not the nominal number coming down. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I mean it's. I still think. Uh, I think. Um, do you remember last year when we were looking at twenty twenty three estimates? And I think at the that that time the market was around two thirty a share for the S and P. The consensus is now down to about two fifteen. Yep, that's um, what I'm, this yeah. is 
Yeah, is that what mm-hmm. you? Yeah, I yeah. think that's right. Mm-hmm. Um, Morgan Stanley at the time, and we pointed this out, were at one ninety five or two hundred, yeah. um, and and there. So, <clears throat> this is their. I mean, that's that's a pretty tight correlation, that isn't it? Um, so wow. again, you have mm-hmm. to believe on some level that this time is different. I don't present these charts to say, look. You know, it's gonna happen. <laughs> the S and P's got a crash. I'm just saying, look, it, something has to be different this time for this not to work out. And of course, it could be. Um, we could speculate yeah. about what those things are, but yeah, it just again, the market's catching up. As I've said to you before, I mean, this is an empirical claim, um, borne out by data that at turning points, the market is always slow, and that's on the yes. downside and the upside they, they're late in raising their estimates. They're late in lowering them. Um, and so I think Morgan Stanley, I can't remember. Um, I think they might be at 195, but they might, well, that maybe they've gone lower. I think they may have said, wow, <laughs> uh, it could easily get to 180, I think on wow. the S and P. Um, so, you know, a 20, a 20 on a 180 is 3,600, um, you know, and, I mean, take your take your multiple. What is it? Sixteen. Mm-hmm. You know, take it yeah. down. <laughs> you know, you're back down to the low threes again. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. And now, so the it's that previous chart. This is the biggest sort of spread between the bottom up consensus twelve month growth and um, that leading indicator that we saw before uh, mm-hmm. and you saw you can see those this is sort of inverted but you see at the prior times it was down here you know you had the quite big correction of the early 2000s and and the financial crisis so sure. yeah question marks there again not not saying that this but you you know you have to pay some uh you have to pay some credence to historical uh, measures and you have to i think if you're going to say that's not going to happen you have to have some kind of um counter narrative mm-hmm. uh why it won't and well, i mean mark, i yeah, market's looking ahead. through the market's looking yeah. through it's the seeing through yeah. this and saying you know it's not going to last long it's only going to be a soft landing i suppose that's what they're yeah pumping at the moment but yeah, is that one? And there's the the resilient consumer just won't die. You know, um, they've yep. spent they may have spent all their savings, but they're just sticking it all on the credit card now. So, <laughs> you know, it keeps going. Um, and wages are good, so they can do that. Wages are good. Yep. Yep. Oh. Um, this is just this is from a different. This is not Morgan Stanley's. It's somebody else's. Um, the revision sentiment um, oh. number of positive revisions to negative revisions. Um, uh, divided by total revisions. So you see that, you know, that's, you know, pretty low. And mm. then you can see that the parallels are 2008, 2008, yep. 9, 2020, when we had a bit of a minor panic. Um, I don't know if that latest upturn is a, is the end of it, but who knows? We, it doesn't, I mean, if we've come down from consensus from last year, from, 230 to 215 that doesn't that's not much no. is it? i mean it's about six percent yeah. um yeah but you should be buying on this like you know when you look at it you, you know yeah. Like, but yeah i yeah. don't know um yeah so I, I have to remember why i put these in there because <laughs> i put them a few days ago uh what is this this is um Oh yeah, so the five-year moving average of um, earnings surprises. So obviously, it's the upside lower. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's upside surprises, I'm guessing. Or... Up, positive surprise, yeah. Yes. So um, mm-hmm. where you're, you know, you're down, you're down pretty low. Wow. Um, yeah. I mean, that only goes back to. 2018 that's probably the worst part of that chart <clears throat> but um mm-hmm. yeah you can see where the average is about uh, uh yeah but is oh, it it's yeah, yeah what call it eight or something like that mm-hmm. so yeah again just earnings uh i mean the thing is if you look at 
how many companies are beating earnings. The majority are, but you, you know yeah. the game. I think the average is seventy to eight, seventy-five to eighty percent usually beat, and it's down around high sixties or something. So, yeah, just a little bit disappointing there. I'm not sure how far it, it'll be interesting. I mean, if if you could tell me that earnings will be two fifteen for this year, he's like, well, yeah. I mean, there's no reason not to buy. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so, but whether they'll stay there or not, what do you reckon? Oh, that's not looking too good. <laughs> like, because, you know, they're conservative, you know, when they yeah. do their earnings and you're thinking, okay, well, you're under that a fair bit of a chunk there, like you're under the conservative estimate. And mm. I don't think they're, you know, cutting enough, you know, their earnings estimate going forward. I think they're pretty optimistic. A lot of the people I'm seeing, like, so, yep. I don't know. And then that's the thing that surprised people, you know, that's what causes markets to turn. But you see the VIX. You know that's fine. Like, <laughs> like, look at this. Yeah, that's way yeah. under, and the VIX is holding pretty low in the low, you know, mid teens. So, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. You've had some declines again this week, but um, they're just very sort of. Hmm. I think maybe there was a what one and a half down, one and a half percent down day, but didn't move the VIX very much, did it? <laughs> and, um, yeah. yeah, just taking back some of the gains. You know, there's been. Yeah, no, a super January, you know, and obviously February can't continue on that. That's insane. You know, yeah. you can't. Like, so there's got to be something to come back there a little bit. And yeah, I don't think it's, we've got all the earnings reports and they all looked, you know, not too bad. Like I was very surprised, you know, and the forward estimates yeah. looked all pretty sweet. It doesn't, no, I have to wait and see. Yeah. But yeah, as you see, those lines are crossing, you know, like interest rates are going up and <laughs> earnings are going down. It's not like they're going to get support here. So, yeah, and that 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 piece I put in last week about margins—it's just um, they can't continue the price increases. And and as we saw last week, they had um, higher sales, but that was usually um, pr mostly price increases with some <laughs> volume decline, only small declines. But uh, that's just not sustainable. You just yes. can't keep. Uh, increasing your sales by raising prices at some point, that's going to... I see private brands just... and supermarkets, they're up over 10% in sales. So that yeah. pe shows people moving out of brands into, you know, so that's a, normally yeah. the front end of it a little bit. Um, I see um, luxury cars down 20% or something, you know, your Porsches, Mercedes, all them, all those secondhand cars that are already getting hit. And that's yeah. normally a, a sign on the front end that, you know, excess cash isn't available so yeah 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 exactly and then it'll start hitting things like um furniture you mm -hmm. know like twelve hundred dollar dining tables and fifteen hundred dollar couches and that sort of thing yeah yep. um so i just threw this in here so th these are only these are three discretionary retailers here in australia um the thing that I took out of if the first one's Dusk, which just reported this morning, actually, I think. Um they um uh, yeah, the cat the cat your cat must like dusk, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The numbers <laughs> don't look too bad on dusk. dusk here, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, just, I'm, as you I haven't see, got balls enough to buy it, that's all. You know, it's just a bit <laughs> a bit too hairy fairy for me to get into it. What are you, yeah. Um know. Yeah, so what I've included here, I actually haven't included their results. What I've included okay. is their outlooks because I think, as we said before, the I mean the, the numbers are interesting. What they did over the last six months, but more to the point, what do they see? Mm. Yes, um, going forward, everybody's expecting a slowdown. Um, so Dusk has had like total sales down three percent for the first seven weeks compared to last year. Of course, there's a little bit of a because if you remember January last year, we were still in COVID lockdown in some areas. Okay. Um, there was still, there was, well, COVID restrictions, you would say in some areas. <clears throat> um, you see there, it, see that online sales number looks pretty bad, but um, that's mm. a common theme across all the retailers, okay. all these retailers. Like um, in the last six months, it's not here for a dares, but their online sales were down more than 20%, but their in-store sales were up. Uh, huge, like sixty percent or something like that, because people came back to stores. Yep. Less, you don't need to shop online, and that was the same. I, I saw, uh, I think, baby bunting and um, 
yeah, a few other. Re- I, I looked at more than these, but these are just three that I included. Mm-hmm. Another one was um, if you look at that last dot point uh, on dusk, it says elevated shipping costs are unwinding. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you look at the second last point, it adheres inbound freight costs are reducing. This was common across yes. them all as well because um, dusk declined to give a, a forecast for the rest of the year. Adairs did. Oh, wow. But Adairs cut their EBIT because margin. Now, they're not mm-hmm. saying because of a weak consumer, that, it, but it's because these costs, those freight costs and a couple of other costs, costs of doing business, elevated. They're saying they're coming down, but it's still going to affect um, the second half. I thought they're so, already down, the shipping costs. I suppose they still got they inventory are. to move. But yeah, past yeah, inventory yeah, we yeah. still priced in, I suppose. But yeah, exactly. So they would still be holding inventory that they bought when the freight costs were high, yeah. and um, yeah. yeah. Oh, I, I, but that'll come down over time. So I think yeah. the dares lost about their gross margin went from sixty one to about fifty eight or something like that. Some something in that region, and so their downgrade because they already give guidance at last year's. I think the AGM. Um, their guidance is, they're not saying it's because of a weak consumer. They're just saying it's because of margin. That's it. So there's, that's it. So another thing I took, so I think, um, if you look at the, the third point down cost out for Adairs, cost out programs have been initiated across the group to manage the potential impact of a weaker economic environment. So, uh-huh. and, th- and again, this was a common comment as well that, they, 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 none of them had said they'd seen it show up in their results yet, but they were saying we anticipate it basically, okay. uh, the retailers. So they're anticipating a downturn in sales. Um, Nick Scarley, um, of course, his furniture, um, which th- they, um, group, so they said we'd anticipated a slowdown. Mm-hmm. And they've already seen January 22, uh, 20 uh, orders were 12% below January 2022. Wow. So that, that's that's a bit of a decline. Uh, Adair's, the total group was up um, 1.8% for the first seven weeks. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can see the Mocha component, which is completely online. That's to be expected. And they are having a, they've had a few problems with Mocha, which they they think they've, uh, addressed, <clears throat> but yeah, so they gave guidance. Nick Scarly didn't give guidance, um, but Nick's that's not unusual for Nick Scarly to not give guidance. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that I just thought it was interesting that so they they're not really saying you know, Nick Scarly didn't. They said they did anticipate slower, and I think it it's not surprising that it shows up in furniture first, yes. bigger cost items. Yep, right. Um, so. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Like, we don't. Do we really need that uh, fifteen hundred dollar uh, dining set? Maybe we can hang on to the one we've got for a while. Or oh, gum tree? You heard of gum tree? Like you know, like <laughs> so. Yeah. yeah, you go on there and there's like a thousand of them on there. You know, like people are just trying to get rid of them out of their places. So yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I don't know. Yeah, if you come and if you come and get it, it's free. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Sort of thing. So in a downturn, you know, they're the things that are going to. But you know. As an investor, they're the things you should be looking at bad numbers, thinking, you know, when things turn around, you buy low, sell high. I remember that used to be something to do, you know. Um, yeah. Well, it's, it's so right now, I mean, if, if you've got a view on, if you don't think the economic environment will get mm. so bad that these companies have to cut their dividends, I mean, think about if you if you were to buy one of these stocks now before they go X div, right? You're basically going to get three dividends in the next 12 months. Yeah. You know, 13 months, call it. Um, and that'll be a yield of about 15%, fully frank. <laughs> uh, if you were to buy Adairs, Dusk, Nick Scarly, Best and Less, um, Best and Less is an, I might even bring that as a company next week. Oh, I wow. think it's an interesting story. They only listed not long ago. They came out with a downgrade. Um, the stock went from it's it's like most of these. It went from four or five bucks down to a dollar eighty or something. Uh, I think it got to a dollar sixty at one point. 
And so you, you you pick it up now, like I said, you get, you're going to get a yeah. 15, you know, three dividends in 13 months. And it's, yeah. yeah and there's but no the cut, thing is, yeah. no cut happening. You hold on to it and you're thinking yeah. a couple of years, you pay for itself. And then you're probably going to get yeah. multiple expansion as well. Like, yeah. It's like, if, it's, if it's a soft landing, yes. But yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that's right. Is it a soft land? I mean, and, and the moment these things, I mean, the moment the RBA reverses course oh. at some point, maybe this year or next year, these things will take off because they always do. It's, it's They're cyclicals. So do you have the stomach to hold through for that time? Do you, do you know, do you take some more? Do you get some more while the prices are good? While you've got, you know, fully franked yields on an annual basis of 8 9%, um, you know, grossed up. Yeah. Oh, oh, you might have seen Intel just cut their dividend sixty something percent. Um, right. And so they're they're getting on the front end of this a little bit, um, which I think is smart. Like I hold Intel, and I thought mm. I was you know pretty tough, but you know, <laughs> like that that but that wouldn't that wasn't a surprise to you, was it? Nah. Because they no, nah. nah. yeah. Yeah. That was kind of, it was sort of obvious, wasn't it, that it was that was coming? Yeah, yeah. Well, all the executives first took a cut, haircut themselves, and you're mm. like, oh yeah, this is coming for us a lot. You know, we're we're not <laughs> going to sit into this five percent dividend yield, you know, because you know this yeah. is what these, you know. And so I think it's quite prudent to do that. You should be cutting the dividend yield, but yeah, of course you should. Yeah, and you shouldn't be taking on debt, and you know you're. They're trying to reinvest, so you know that's what you want a good company to do, but. Yeah, the CEO is a little bit dodgy about it, you know, sort of hiding the fact because I think a lot of dividend people are in this stock, and so you know if they dump it, but yeah. none of them have now. So I don't know what's going on. I thought it was going to be a huge dump after no. that, but only went down a couple of percent. So yeah, well maybe it's different. Maybe it's different. You know, in Australia, I think it matters more because you the franking. Yep. Franking credits. People are really addicted to their. It's hard to talk people out of their dividends and say, look. <laughs> You're better off taking that money and investing in a company that's growing because mm-hmm. they'll get better returns over the long run through capital appreciation. You just can't convince people of that once they're addicted to their dividends. Oh, no. Even you can show them mathematically yeah. that it's yeah. Yeah, Roger but, uh, Montgomery just did a great article on Livewire about it. I sent it to you, so but he shows yeah. the numbers and everything, but yeah, to try yeah. to explain it to people, it's just yeah, nearly impossible. But mm. yeah. 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 Um, I just, I just, I just included James Hardy because we talked about it before. Mm -hmm. Um, you know that I like this stock. I think you might think it's not bad as well. Mm -hmm. They downgraded again. Remember we included it last year when they downgraded, they downgraded again. I think this was last week or the week before, um, stocks about $31. It's off its lows. I think it got down to about 26 or 27. I think it, it peaked at over 50. Um, (laughs) So yeah, it's just that that deterioration in the housing market is, um, you know, is ongoing. Um, don't know that there's light at the tunnel, but if you have a look at, as we've said before, if you have a look at the home building stocks in the US, <laughs> you'd think uh, there's absolutely no problem at all. Well, Home Depot yeah. just increased the dividend by ten percent. <laughs> Did they really? I'm like holy so, hell! Yeah. Is, is it, I mean, Home Depot is is that more reflective of the sort of um, every man, uh, you know, Jack does it himself kind yeah. of thing, or is it yeah. yeah, yeah, more than actual? So they're a little uh, bit more protected because you're going to get DIY guys, you know, just renovating their homes and stuff. And, but still, yeah. like it's going to get hurt. Like no one yeah. wants to reinvest into something that doesn't make them a lot of money. You're not going to reinvest in your home when it's losing negative you know losing equity <laughs> like yeah you don't feel like putting that extra room on when you're losing money so yeah 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 all right so we'll get off james hardy and we will get to um if i can stock of the week higher quest tell yeah. us about this one tim um so every week i'm turning over you know 50 rocks trying to find something and um <laughs> there's a guy on Twitter, a bit of a shout out to the Lone Wolf. I said, you know, he said, oh, you know, here's all these quality companies, but you know that I'm trying to make things harder for myself now. Well, what's a, <laughs> a smaller cap type business that will compound into the future? Um, yeah. So I know what quality is. I know what a good price is. I know what low debt, you know, all the good things, but can I pick it a bit earlier? So I'm getting these multiple baggers. 
And yeah. um, he came through and came up with this stock, um, High Quest, which is like a franchise type model. So oh. super capital light. Uh, I'm coming across with a few of these high type companies, as you might notice. Like, um, so yeah, super. But that's capital. a new take on that's a new take on it, isn't it? It's, uh, that these aren't usually franchises. No. So, but you can hiring people directly is a pain in the butt, you know, with all the mm-hmm. paperwork and bureaucracy and all that. Um, and if you just want to hire people occasionally for a few hours, or you don't know you know, what's your business going forward? You know, can you afford to put someone on the books? You can just hire them yeah. as a contractor type thing. Um, yeah, and these guys have got offices all over the United States and I think it could, you know, grow out of that as well and go international more. Um, but yeah, what does look- it do that makes it, because di- there's there's a shitload of hiring agencies out there. What what well, is there well, anything that makes them? They've got a brand and they've got the systems in place. So somebody can start up a hiring agency in a regional type area and, you know, get some sales and, you know, got all the processes and everything under the sort of like a Domino's franchise type thing. Yeah. And, so, and then they can do advertising as well to bring in business for you. And then you're just focusing on running the day to day. So actually offers a fair bit of incentive. for. So, so what are they, are they like, so here, get a franchise off us and we'll take 10% of your revenue, that type of thing. That's basically what they're doing. Or? Yeah. I'm not sure exactly what the cut is, but yeah, it's the same. Yeah. yeah it's just a normal yeah. franchise. I'm not sure exactly what the numbers are, but yeah. Mm. And you can see here, like it, they are diluting a bit, but they, yeah. it's yeah. still a very young company. Um, and yeah, you just look at some of the, the metrics here are just off the charts, you know, it's starting to come back into your know, price free cash flow a little bit high, but yeah. um Return on capital, you know, you're starting to get those larger numbers now, and you know the margins. Look at that; they're just insane. You can tell that they're just running an office here. The staff are like, <laughs> in, you know, increasing. They're doubled the number of staff, yeah. but yeah, it's just these. Some of these things I'm trying to find a little bit earlier. Um, what did like, they do? 2019? Did they make an acquisition or something? Because their shares went up by about yeah. four mil. And um, the number of employees jumped by, well, doubled, didn't it, basically? Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah. I'm not, yeah, acquisition strategy and everything like that, I'm not totally, you know, I've only learned it in the last couple of days, but just looking at the numbers, you know, I'm just trying to find something that here that I could do a deep dive into. And it's one of these ones as well. If we do hit a bit of a hard landing, this is going to look terrible. Like people mm. are going to just throw this out because it's going to go, oh, look, Who's going to be interested in hiring people? No one. So you're going to get this yeah. um, return on vested capital go back to the single digits. So that's going to flow back to you know, to a five or something. And you know, price to free cash flow is going to go insane. You know, you're going to be up to a fifty or something. But they're the times yeah. you should be buying it. You know, you should be buying it then. And then, as the economy grows out of it, you you just hold on for it for a year or two. It's got a dividend. You know, low payout ratio. Um, yep. If you go to the next slide, I can show you the debt and total debt. Yeah. Three point four two million net debt one point nine eight. And look, you're getting thirteen, you know, thirteen million dollars in free cash flow here. Like you got no debt. So I mean, yeah, I mean, it, you, yeah, forty six million in equity compared to net debt of two. It's not much. It's not really much in the way of gearing, is it? No, uh, and yeah, see, a little, but this is what I like, you know, this, I want to have a, an inflection point here where it looks terrible, but you know, it's going to survive. You know, some of these ones yeah. that discretionary ones that you look at, you know, it's like, this is what you've got to look at. You've got to buy when it's going to look a little bit terrible and everyone's going to run away from it, but you know, you've, yeah. you know, you can hold it through. You're going to come out really strong on the other side. So. Yeah, I mean, these the discretionary ones do bother me with the amount of debt they hold. You know, like they've got you know close to if you take out lease liabilities, they're usually around one for one debt to equity. Um, yep. If you include the lease liabilities, it's worse. Or something like um, Step One Clothing, uh, it's got no debt and thirty two million in cash, and I think the market cap's about fifty five million. Um, <laughs> full disclosure, I bought some just before the result. Um, yeah, so there are some debt-free um, 
retailers out there. But yeah, I mean, this looks pretty comfortable, doesn't it? If there's a if there's a downturn. Yeah, I was looking at bigger trees this morning, you know, because I like the business, you know, like the yep. <laughs> staples, you know, pretty easy to understand. Yep. Is it going to be around in 10 years? And then you look at the deck and you're like, holy hell, who's running this show? Like, <laughs> like, what are you investing in here? You know, it's just, but they've just got piles and piles of debt and the payout ratio is like 130% or something, you know? Right. So they've got no yeah, chance. Yeah, that's not to pay- sustainable. Yeah, yeah, and they've got no chance to pay down the debt or, you know, reinvest into something else. They just pile it on. And in a higher interest rate environment, it's like that Domino's one we looked at last week. You'd have mm. to be nuts to get into that if you think interest rates are going to hold up here. Like it's all going to get yeah. re-rated at yeah. a high number. So, yep, just want to thank the Lone Wolf for that one. And yeah, Giddy up. So there's a, he's worth a follow on Twitter. Yep. Is that right? Yeah, is that where you, yeah. Okay. yeah. So following him. On, yeah. So I'm following him on Twitter. So I don't. Hopefully, he can give me a couple more of these ones. The low market cap. Um, lower market cap um these great metrics so yep yeah all right well that'll about do us today then um thanks tim for the for the bringing that stock and we will see you next time